Hello there and welcome. So here's a kickback uh, and relaxed look at what the IPAC 1940 uh, Pocket PC used to offer back in the mid 2000s. So this is actually a I don't know what you would call it. Um, well, there was a whole uh, suite of uh, uh, pocket PC devices, but they were all just personal assistants. This one comes from HP, and I don't know if you're reminiscing about it, you feel a sort of uh, need to have a nostalgic look at what it used to do. Uh, you're just curious maybe because you saw one sometime and you thought to yourself, well, what the heck is this? Well, actually, it's a sort of PDA, a personal digital assistant running Windows Mobile 2003. And yes, so this is what multitasking and smart devices were in the mid 2000s. Uh, the first time I laid my hands on one of these things was about in 2008, I believe. So they were already dwindling in the market. Uh, smartphones were taking over everything that was supposed to be, you know, mo mobility, uh, carrying devices and so on. Uh, <laughs> strangely enough, MP3 players were still a thing back then, uh, Android wasn't a household name, uh, neither was Apple for that matter, so yeah, when you thought smartphones in 2000 to 2010, uh, you thought maybe Symbian, so stuff like that, phones which still have had buttons, maybe a QWERTY keyboard, and um, a capacitive touch screen. So this, uh, well, actually I got my hands on one of these devices uh, around 2008 or 2009 and um, oddly enough, I didn't know what it was. I knew about PDAs, but I didn't know the whole background, what HP was supposed to be compared with Palm and what the difference between Palm OS and Windows Mobile was. So I was kind of in the dark with it. I didn't know actually what it could do, but I was fairly certain it didn't have um, a SIM tray. And actually I was right because this phone is, uh, sorry, this uh, device is not actually a cell phone. It doesn't double as a communication device. Sorry, I don't have any long fingernails. So yeah, as you can see here, there's no, not really much going on. There's no slot for a SIM card, uh, but you do get Bluetooth and you do get an SD card. So I'll get back to the communication stuff and features later on. Let me just um, quickly tell you how I stumbled upon it. So I, well, I sort of traded some type of phone um, um, back in 2009, as I was saying. Uh, the catch was that this device only charges with its proprietary USB cable. Um, I'm going to show you this right now. So this is actually the the DC charger or AC charger, I don't know, you stick this into the, the wall socket and you power up the device, but only if you used the proprietary USB cable, which is right here. Let me just get it for you. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting tangled here in a mess of wires. So you could only charge this device by using this particular uh, connecting port, this slab, if you will. So no universal micro USB or USB type C things. If you're one of those guys who misses proprietary USB connections, yeah, welcome to 2005. This is what we used to um, function with. Uh, yeah, you could, well, you could get actually, you could, uh, you could cheat a bit and get a, a, a shortened version of that <laughs> proprietary socket. This is actually the only the end of the cable with 
um, with a fun little, um, I don't know what you call that anyway, um, a plug or some, of some sorts which connects to the uh, DC, the AC, DC charger, whatever, so the wall socket, so you could uh, walk around without using the USB cable. Well, this, this to me was rather superfluous, redundant, so I don't really find it that encouraging um, to use. Again, funny story, getting back to my um, account, I used to have this whole device but without the ability to charge it so I would take this battery and charge it in a universal charger with two connectors just to be able to use this for about two to four hours as well basically um, an mp3 player I used to listen to audiobooks on it and well just play solitaire and jawbreaker along so I considered that to be multitasking. Pretty funny if you think about it. Yeah, well, it was actually awkward back then as well. But still, I, I kind of, I'm sort of attracted to this design. I, I feel I appreciate it very much. I like the metallic feel. I know this is plastic, but it's actually a well-coated plastic. I believe it's electroplated with some chrome satin, chrome finish, or uh, and what have you. Um, this um, this uh, housing, this front bezel, and also the whole chassis, which holds the motherboard and all the components, was, I think, electroplated. Have a listen. So yeah. To me, that's a metallic finish. This uh, this uh, battery uh, lid, however, was cheap plastic, so this one's not so impressive anymore. And also, if we're speaking about construction, well, yeah, the the fit and finish on the back is a bit lacking. Still. It was an interesting design and look at how narrow it was back then in 2008 or even more even more still in 2004 when this device was new. While well, you had thick phones, um, not so great fit and finish and well this one was actually, well it was in a class of its own even though it's this is not a, an expensive device it's more on the lower uh, mid-level uh, offering of a HP so it wasn't a hugely expensive device it was nice enough but with great fit and finish and a quality feel, feel to it Looking at it now, I don't know, it looks like a remote control from a science fiction movie, some sort of gadget from maybe from Star Trek or um, Quantum Leap or some sort. So yeah, it's kind of strange, kind of goofy looking. So let's just, let me just find a socket, a wall socket and I'll turn it on. As you can see, the battery is drained so I don't have anything to power it with. Okay, so I plug the charger in. Let's just get this thing started and see what's what with it. I'm going to briefly show you what it can do. So right now it's booting up. Again, whenever you start it from scratch, it, it needs to be calibrated. You need to calibrate the screen. I'm just going to uh, tell you this right now. So yeah, you have five points you need to uh, touch in order to confirm that the screen is working properly. And now it's showing you how, you know, how to basically copy and paste. But it's all based on Windows stuff. And this brings me to my next point. Why do you think I love these devices in the first place? Well. First thing that struck me was the fit and finish, but also uh, I wasn't a huge fan of mobile phones. I still am not to this day. I know they're important and well, I cannot live without, I cannot live without a smartphone. Same as 
most people today. But again, I'm sort of I'm nostalgic about this no nonsense uh, way of uh, moving through screens and menus. So you don't have any excessive animations here. You don't have any mm, any unnecessary details. The the text. So while the screen is lacking in uh, resolution, clearly, uh, the text is pretty clear and uh, easy to read. So there's no lag, and well, it's a joy to use. Of course, the the ergonomics were a bit of a nightmare because the screen was only 3.5 inches in diagonal and it only had 320 by 240p so only a qvga resolution uh, but in the right setting it was actually useful you got word excel so you could basically edit and uh, keep notes and even record something. You have a record button here. Of course, the quality of the recording is not good at all, but that's besides the point. This is an old device after all. Um, I don't know, it's sort of, it sort of um, makes me wonder what would have happened if, I don't know, uh, smartphone uh, manufacturers took a more simplistic and uh, bare-bones approach, approach to the all, all these, this OS operating system deal. So I don't like animation screens, I, I'm not a fan of, I've gotten used, with, used to them, but uh, imagine what a uh, potent smartphone will would do without uh, this all this silly clutter that uh, you get in a, a modern um, in a modern gadget so this uh, consider this iPack is actually running on let me just show you I'm going to go into settings and go into system I don't know yes system so memory and have a look at this. It only offers about. about um, 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 this is quite funny actually. 64 megabytes of RAM, of which only 56.66 are user accessible. And out of these, you could, well, you could switch this um, bar to left or right, depending on your preference. You could increase storage or on the other hand increase the space for programs but this would affect the um, the other um, setting so if you had if you wanted lots of storage you wouldn't have access to programs and um, and so on so yeah <laughs> this is quite interesting of course in terms of capability this um, this gadget wasn't actually up to the even to the basic modern standards so while you could run a simple multitasking uh, scenario on it let's say um, word document and an audio book in the background and maybe a game and a few other app apps you can actually run um, video files on it uh, except maybe if you were to uh, dumb them down to a level that's not even not even um, acceptable, I don't know, so uh, poor sub QVGA resolution, maybe you would be able to run some basic videos, but even still this would struggle. So it's got a weak CPU, I think it's a 166 megahertz CPU, let me just check it. It's not a memory because uh, it's been a while since I used this thing but let's see yeah so it's got a Samsung S3C something or other processor and the device ID no I didn't name it um, I don't know but take my word for it it was a single core 166 megahertz CPU this particular unit is a 1940 unit, so it 
it's basically the 1900 series it was launched with the 1930 that was the mainstream model then they had a turned down version the 1910 and this the more premium version the 1940 used the bluetooth connection and i don't know doubled the ram memory or something like that irrelevant at this point so yeah and here's the power button you can turn it off and on instantly <laughs> so yeah think about it this way if you were a young person uh, i don't know involved in tech or you were sort of attracted by all this mobile gadgets this was actually quite cheap by the end of 2000 the end of 2009 i got the first one at I don't know street value of 30 or 50 euros so yeah uh, it was actually running but it didn't have a charger and a cable um, I spent quite a lot of time getting a cable for it but um, it was quite reliable in its basic features so I could use it every day and yeah not to not do very much with it of course it didn't have Wi it didn't have Wi-Fi connection and stuff like that only an infrared port and a Bluetooth so yeah but an old type of Bluetooth um, it didn't have it, it didn't offer quite a lot of speed let's put it like that this one comes with a funky um, leather um, leather case and I do say funky in, uh, in a double entendre it's funky looking and I think funky smelling even it's not dirty by any means but it's not in great shape either I just use it to keep this thing uh, free of scratches because I just throw it around in a box of old uh, junk and I don't want it scratched so yeah at, at first i was uh, fascinated by how thin it is and how nice it is to hold in hand it's very ergonomic very uh, rigid have a look so a bit of bend test you could see nothing really happening i hope yeah i know it's pretty rigid and well built for its time so yeah this was about 300 dollars when new and I got it on the cheap side interestingly enough I have had about 10 to 15 devices like this I mean only the 1900 series and uh, all of them came in great condition even aesthetically none of them had cracked screens even they, if they were missing a battery or something and <laughs> people didn't know in my country people didn't actually know what these were and they didn't have the patience to get chargers for them so I used to buy them very cheap equip them with chargers and make an extra euro dollar buck an extra profit on the side just by selling them um, refurbished let's say I used to open a few of them up maybe change the menu from German to English because that was a popular choice and they came from all over the place by 2010 i know west europe western europeans they kind of gave up on the whole uh, pocket pc professional gadget handheld movement they sort of migrated to android apple and uh, other gadgets which were more fun more uh, immersive in their um in their uh, um, I don't know in their experience so it, it offered more user experience more personalized user experience myself while well, I always preferred the minimalist no-nonsense look of this Windows uh, style uh, menu and OS uh, I, actually I was sort of um, I was sort of shocked when Android came in my life for the first time so I got an Android phone and I was required to log in with my email to install anything I was used to getting kits downloaded as they were and obviously it's a more complicated uh, procedure in some matters in some regards but it's still the preferred way to go so I don't like the App Store I don't but that's besides the point this so this is the 
So this is the handheld and the pocket PC and what it does. I don't know if this was instructive or informative for you. Uh, I don't really have anything else to show you. I have a second YouTube channel which is automotive themed and I'm just doing this for fun since I don't have any content on the other channel right now. I'll click, I'll leave a link um, uh, for the the other channel and well I hope you like uh, stuff like this because I do have several other digital cameras I want to talk about and share with you some strange phones some old um, Siemens uh, phones from the early 2000s feature phones and stuff like that but I won't be giving everything away from the first time. So thanks for watching and hope you find this a bit entertaining.